this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials and today I have part three of a three-part series for you and it's all about rediscovering your creativity and then making jewelry. So it's kind of like a week on my e-course by that name, Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry. And that e-course starts on January 2nd, 2017. And I run that class just once or twice a year. So if you're interested, I invite you to come over to, to my website. The link will be below the video. It's Kimberly Kohler dot com slash rediscover and Kimberly is spelled K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I-E -E. so part one I shared a creativity booster with you and that was about music and you also got to see me sketching in my jewelry sketchbook while I was listening to some Mozart and um, and you've got a rare glimpse into my jewelry sketchbook because I don't normally share that. So you can check out part one over my website. Part two were, was a jewelry skill lesson and I showed you how to make a wire wrapped bead link. And we'll be using that skill today to create our jewelry project. And that's part three of the final part of the series. So I've shared this three-part series over the period of three weeks, but in my e-course it's similar to one week, and in fact in the e-course you kind of even get more than what I'm sharing with you for this three-part series. You get multiple jewelry skills lessons, you'll learn all kinds of different techniques for jewelry making, and the jewelry projects, um, there are at least a few each week. There's a total of 21 jewelry projects for the six weeks and I don't expect you to necessarily make all of those jewelry projects in the six weeks but it just gives you a variety to choose from and even though I only run this class at certain times of the year once you purchase it you can go back to it anytime you like and and get go back to any of the projects you might have missed or skills lessons or perhaps you get behind then you can always go back and get more out of the class. So let's move on to the jewelry project. So I'm excited to share this project with you because there are so many ways you can really customize this and make it your own. I'm going to give you a few ideas and hopefully you run with it. I would love to see what you make if you make this. You can upload pictures over on the post for this over my website at KimberlyKohler.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, I will put the link. If you're watching it on my website, you just go down to where it says reply and in that box you'll see an option to upload a picture. And you can upload a picture or leave a comment, however you want to do that, but I would love to see what you make. So we are going to make a tassel with chain and so I just wanted to show you I have this bag of leftover chain pieces and this is perfect for using up these little pieces of chain that you might have left over from other projects. So as you're making things with chain and you're adjusting it and cutting it off and maybe you have like a few inches left, um, save all that. That's what I do. That's what this whole bag is. And then I just dumped it out and found some chain and I cut them all basically a similar length but I wanted a little bit of variety of different sizes and these are all about four inches long you can decide how long you'd like your tassel to be you might want to use it for other things if you want to make a pendant you can kind of go as long as you want um, if you're making you could do the same technique and make a pair of earrings and so um, you might not want it as long so just think about those things so I just had a variety of chain I cut them all similar length if you don't have a collection of chain uh, leftovers like I do then you can just purchase chain and cut it to the length you would like it to be and I have this one weird chain that had this little kind of crystal ball thing on the end that I liked so I just left that little 
fall on there. And if you need help kind of getting all the chain the same length, I like to just put it on a wire and dangle them and then you can just cut them. But like I said, I did a little bit of variety in the different lengths. So I'm just going to leave them on that wire. And then you'll need a bead cap for the top of your tassel. You can use whatever bead cap you like. I got this at Happy Mango Beads. They have a variety. You can find them lots of places. Um, so whatever, wherever you want to get them is fine. You'll need some wire, and I'm using 22 gauge wire, and I'm using para wire. You probably maybe heard of me talk about this lately. This is the kind of wire I've been using a lot of lately. It's non-tarnished, silver plated and I really like it. Um, if you're not using para wire, you can use other wire. I'm using 22 gauge wire because I'm going to be adding in some wire wrapped bead links in amongst some of these chain and I just wanted little tiny beads so I used a smaller gauge of wire and then I decided to just use that gauge for the entire process. 20 gauge wire would work fine depending on your beads. You're going to need some jump rings, and I have four millimeter jump rings, so they're just little. And I actually teach you how to make jump rings and how to make chain in wire wrapping for beginners. So if that's something you want to learn how to do for yourself, then you can check out wirewrappingforbeginners.com. And then I'm just going to add in some little charms, and you can really use any charms you like. I just went through, I have a collection of lots of charms, and I went through, since when I'm doing this video, it's the end of the year, and we're kind of thinking about how we want next year to be, I kind of looked for some charms that kind of represented some feelings or I want to do for the next year. You can do this any time of year. You could do a, a theme of anything if you want. If you'd like it to represent your life and significant things in your life, you could add the charms. You don't even actually have to add charms, but I'm going to. So those are the main supplies. And I'd like to also say, you could use the chain just plain as it is and make a tassel or any combination of the things I've shown you. So what I also wanted to point out is to make an actual tassel, all you really need is the wire, the bead cap, and the chain. The other things are just other ways to customize that you can add in if, if you like or you don't have to. And then the tools you'll need are wire cutters, round nose pliers, chain nose pliers, and then it's helpful to have some bent nose pliers as well. So the first step is really what I've already told you. Get your chain ready and get it all some more length. You could do lots of different lengths if you prefer. And I'm using two, four, six, eight, nine pieces of chain. I didn't really count that out until just now. <laughs> but um, I decided it by putting my chain on this wire, bending it up and then just pulling it through and seeing how it looked with my bead cap and deciding is that enough chain or do I need more? Maybe you have a large bead cap and you'd want more chain and, or maybe you have a smaller bead cap and you'd want less. So that's up to you. But we're not going to put the bead cap on quite yet. We are going to work on the chain. So, now that this is all the length I would like, some of these chains I'm going to be adding charms to the bottom, and some of these chains I'm going to add some of these wire wrapped bead links. If you need to know how to make a wire wrapped bead link, that was part two of this video series, and you can go back and see that. Since I already did the video for that, I'm not going to um, go into that right now. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this chain because it already has something on the bottom. I'm going to pull it off to the side. I'll probably just leave it as is. And then I'm just going to choose a chain. And I'm going to put a wire wrapped bead link in the middle of it. And I'm going to do this with 
I guess at least five chains, or I might add two wire wrapped bead links to one chain. Um, but I'm not going to do this for all of all of the chain. But you know, like I said, you can decide, and you might want to do it to every single chain. It's up to you. So, and also, I guess if you have even smaller pieces of chain, this would work well to connect the two pieces because we're about to cut this chain. So I'm actually going to grab my wire cutters. This is an older pair of wire cutters I have because this chain is really thick and I don't want to use my good wire cutters to cut this chain. Alright. Let me just can pull. I just cut that link and then we can just pull the two pieces off. So now I'm just opening up two jump rings and I'm going to attach um, the chain to each side of the wire wrapped bead link. And I'll place a link to how to properly open and close a jump ring if you don't know how to do that. So I'm adding half the chain to the jump ring and then one of the loops of the wire wrapped bead link and then we'll close the jump ring and then on the other side there is a second loop on the wire wrapped bead link and we'll do the same thing and add the other side of the chain now this will make your chain longer so you can obviously decide if you'd like to you could leave it long or you can trim it down a little bit shorter so it's in similar you know similar length to the other ones which is what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna cut a few links off here. And then we have that. I realize as I'm doing this, I chose these beads because they're very sparkly and they're clear and I really like them, but they might be a little bit difficult to see in the video. But it just sort of puts a little bling in the middle of the chain. And then I'm just going to choose another chain. And I'm going to do this for a, a few of my chains. Okay, so I have added wire wrapped bead links to five of my chains. And I have, hopefully, you can see this kind of done them in different spots on the chains so they're not all like in one spot they're kind of varied so like I said you can do that or you can choose not to and then I'm going to have some chains that are just plain um, they don't have that on them so I keep putting on this wire because it's easier for me to see how everything hangs if it's on the, the wire. But actually we're going to put this on a wire now that um, it's going to stay on. We're actually going to make the tassel and then finally we'll put on the charms. But I think it's a little bit easier to actually put the tassel together at this point rather than waiting. So I'm going to cut a piece of wire. And again, I'm just using 22 gauge wire, 20 gauge wire would work fine too. Um, and this wire is about 4 inches long. And then I'm just going to thread my chain on here, just the top link. And I'm just going to kind of vary the different chains I have. So this one's, first one was plain, this one has a wire wrapped bead link on it. Um, I think I'll do another plain one. Slide this off here. That's just some scrap wire I was using. And I'm going to put the, this chain that has a little charm on the bottom already. And maybe another plain one. Another one that has a wire wrapped bead link on it. So you get the idea, just kind of vary it 
and you're just using the top. The other thing I forgot to mention, when you're putting these wire wrapped bead links in um, the chains, you don't want to do it too high because part of the chain does get covered up by the bead cap. So don't put it all the way up to the top because it will just get covered up. And so I'm just continuing to add the chain. And I'm flipping over and I'll put a couple of these on the side. the last one over here. Okay, so we have the chain on here. I have a variety of chain and a variety of different spots where there's a wire wrapped bead link. And then I'm just going to kind of fold this in half, find the middle. I always just find the middle by putting the two ends together. And then we're just going to fold this in half. And then I like to just do a twist. You, you don't even really need to do that. It just kind of holds everything together a little better. And then we're going to slide the bead cap on over top of those two wires and down as far as it will go. And like I said, it goes over the top of the chain. And so now you want to grab your round nose pliers and we're going to hold one of these wires in our round nose pliers. We're going to make a wire wrapped loop. So I'm going to bend the wire down and around my pliers. And now I'm grabbing my chain nose pliers and you can just kind of push this other wire up kind of out of the way if you want. And I'm going to go around once with the short wire. As I'm doing that, I'm straightening the loop so it's straight above the tassel. Okay, I'm just going to switch hands if I am right-handed. And then you can use your bent nose pliers to continue wrapping around. You want to go around at least two more times. Um, you can go more though. And then with the other wire that I said to just put to the side, it's going to wrap around as well. For some reason, I'm having a hard time getting a hold of it. There we go. You want to go around a couple of times with it as well. And if it's easier, you could just use your hands as well. And you could just go around so you like how it looks. Like I said, you want to go around at least twice with each wire, though. And then you might have some excess wire. And then you just want to come in and trim that off with your wire cutters, um, making a flush cut. So if it's standard wire cutters, there's a front, and the wire cutter is a little concave, and then the back, it's flat. So use the flat side toward what you're cutting. And then use your chain nose pliers to make sure the ends are not poking out. When you're making this loop, if you know what you're going to be using it on, if you know you have a chain or maybe a cord or something that you're going to slide it on, make sure you make this loop big enough if you want to slide it on. If not, you can just hook it with a jump ring to you know, put it on a chain or something like that. So at this point, this is a tassel and it's nice just the way it is, but I want to add some extra stuff to it. So I'm just going to be adding some charms and you can add them to the ends, which would be very easy, or you can add them to different links in the chain. So again, we'll just be using jump rings. I'm just using four millimeter jump rings to add the charms kind of to different chains here. 
and I'm going to add them at different spots on the chain. So this one I am going to add to the bottom. And I have some, like a few feathers, but you could use all different charms if you want, or you can use all the same, or no charms at all. So that is one, and I'm just going to add in the rest of these. So this is my tassel. It turned out pretty funky. I love it. It has all these fun little different things in it. So here's an example of a charm I added in the middle. And when it hangs, it just hangs there, and you can see it. I added a couple to the bottom, actually a few. There's another one in the middle. And so you can really add whatever you want. You can really fill this out, add all kinds of stuff to it. And then you would just put this on a chain or a cord somehow to wear it. Or like I mentioned, you can make earrings out of these as well. You could, um, you might want to make them a little bit lighter and not as long for earrings. But, that's, you know, that's up to you. You know your ears better than I do. So I hope you get creative with this and use your own ideas. And I'd love to see what you've made. And just a reminder, kind of depending on when you're actually watching this video, you can still get in for the next session of Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry. My students love this class. It is everybody's favorite class. It makes you feel so much more creative. You'll be making your own jewelry. I teach you all kinds of techniques. I show you projects, but I really encourage you to customize and make them your own and really express your own creativity and your own personal style. So I hope to see you in class. If not, all my best to you anyway. I hope this was helpful and you make a really cool tassel. And I would love if you took a picture and shared it with me over on the blog post that goes with this video. The link below. And I will talk to you soon.